Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So shout out to Hard Bastard. Hard Bastard um, did a video the other day. And what it boiled down to is, yes, he was pointing the finger at the thing with Jordan, but he was also asking just a basic fundamental question. Is there something that we can unite over? Is there something we can unite over? Um, Hard Bastard continuously says he's left the left. <laughs> he's like, I'm done with the left. I'm sick of this shit, I'm gone. Um, but he's asking a, a pertinent question. Do you really need, what is the value of a label? And is that label necessary? I would argue that the label isn't really necessary. What do you want to accomplish? I'm sick of labels. I, I, I use the term progressive only because it gives somewhat of a demarcation point. I, I'm further to the left than most. I would even probably be considered a radical leftist in that sense. Only in the sense that I look at the world and I say, I see that problem, what's the root of that problem, and how do we fix that problem? that just so happens to land me on the left. So I consider myself the leftist. In the sense of um, what our ambassador is saying though, that in no way stops us from interacting, from agreeing on the things that we agree upon. But more important, to look at the world honestly, to just be honest. It, it's, it's, one, it's, I, it's, it's funny, I keep saying, it's, I keep, I'm hearing this thing on multiple cases of just an honest appraisal. What is the reality to which you exist when honesty is this precious jewel that, that's rare? It's like this rare gem of sorts um, that's few and far between. That's an amazing thing, right? Shouldn't honesty be the norm? You look at your world and you say, these people are lying to me. These people are lying to me. I can tell these people are lying to me. And it is an aggravating thing to watch. You've seen me watch videos where I'm like, these people are lying to me. To the degree that hard bastard is a gift this level of lying, this level of corruption, to the degree he's earnest in, in the way he regards politics, N not so much that we're going to come to the same appraisals, but that the appraisal is earnest. What I mean is, when you see me give an appraisal, when I'm uh, analyzing something, I'm working through something, I'm, I'm stepping through piece by piece because I want you to see my, my step, I want you to see my process. This is how I got from point A to point B to point C. If I am showing bias at any point, you can say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Point B is a little sketchy, dude. Point B is a little sketchy. I disagree with point B. I do this, A, for my own honesty's sake, but B, because it helps me to work through a particular issue. Um, my goal in all of this is earnestness and honesty. You may disagree with what I come up with in an appraisal. And look, I'm a flawed human being, ultimately. My appraisal, to some degree, is going to be wrong. Nobody has to. Yes, there's a real world out there. But nobody has the, the bee's knees on appraisal in regards to what that real world is. You can never really actually touch the real world. You can try to give an honest appraisal based upon the things that make you up. But again, Hard Bastard and Tim Black kind of made this point of how rare it is to get that. I'm pointing a finger at, yes, that is a rare thing. It is sad that that is a rare thing. But ask the second question. Ask the second question. Don't just stop there. It's too easy to say that the newsmen, the politicians, all these guys are shills. All these guys are just craving and all these guys are out for whatever. All of these guys are making certain decisions that are, A, lies, that are corrupt, and that for the most part are taking cash that they're calling bribes to do policy to screw over their constituents. That it's not one party, that it's both parties. Both parties are the problem. Now, in, in asking this question of, well, what's the cause, and how do you fix it? Now, I, I want to turn this in a different way. It's too easy to say that all of these people, for the most part, are just craven psychopaths. That's too easy. Because the second question becomes, well, wait a minute, how would you fix that? You're immediately kind of struck with this reality that some problems can't be solved at the level to which those problems express themselves. Like, so yes, you have a media and political establishment, I, and I consider both of those things to be somewhat one unit. It's almost like space-time. You have politics and you have media. Those two things together create the establishment, the mighty interest that supports and pulls those strings. Because understand, most of our media only comes from like six channels. You have a capitalistic system that's based off cash. Cash is the highest value in a capitalistic system. 
Your range of freedom is determined by the amount of capital that you have in your pocket. That's just, that's, that point is unassailable. The amount of cash controls your range of freedom. In a capitalistic society, capital is all. Everything else is subordinate to capital, including humanity. Including humanity. Now, what I'm getting at is the drives and incentives in that particular structure drive the people to behave a particular way. <clears throat> now, let's zoom out for a bit. Like, so, zoom from the perspective of being on a spaceship. And just look at the world, just your appraisal. And you're going to see crime, you're going to see corruption, you're going to see pain, anguish, you're going to see the person who doesn't have enough to give their kid money for a field trip. You're going to see the person who doesn't have enough to buy medication, who doesn't have enough for food, who's sleeping on the street. You're also going to see politicians taking cash and leaning a particular way against the interests of their constituents. You're going to see media organizations. Again, we're in a capitalistic system. Capital is the highest virtue. The system itself and the people in it can form around to that particular goal, meaning that the story you're getting is not necessarily an honest portrayal, but it's the portrayal that those particular companies are okay with you receiving. There's a difference in those things. Now, you could say those people are corrupt. And yeah, those people are corrupt. But let's ask the question in a different way that's a little bit more personal. In fact, a little bit more vulgar. Chuck Todd is Mr. Oblivious. And yes, Chuck Todd often gets on TV and says ridiculous and oblivious things, even though the reality of the situation is pretty well known. You can actually point to Chuck Todd and say, hey, Chuck, this is the reality of the situation. This is the news. This is what came out. Why don't you know this? But let's take something. Chuck Todd, I'm not worried about Chuck Todd causing any damage. We need to be a more stark example to get my point across. We're condemning them. We're pointing a finger at them. We're saying that, yes, honesty is rare. And these other people are fucking lying to us. And that's true. That is true. Let's take that level of condemnation to the level of a cop shooting an unarmed kid in the back. Now, you can change, you can tort that any way you want. You can say that cop was being a hero when he shot the kid in the back. You can say the cop shot the kid in the back in a craven way. You can say the guy got the gun away from the cop and killed the cop. However you want to contrive that particular story with your particular hero and your particular villain. But whatever that story is, give it a hero and give it a villain. Now, your villain, in this case, just like the media, but in this case more vulgar in their terms, any condemnation has to come to an honest point, it has to come to an honest conclusion, an honest consideration. Even though it's an honest consideration that's completely ignored in our typical society. If you're going to condemn somebody for a behavior, your A, any honest condemnation, has to come from a place of taking the environmental factors that that person was raised in, cultural, the person experience, in addition to the amalgam of that aspect of who he is in relation to all that stuff, meaning everything that that person went through. It is common knowledge, it is clear as can be that the experiences of an individual often dictate how that individual turn out, meaning the environmental factors, how he was raised, what he was fed, clean air, clean food, shelter, whether it was a happy household, the experiences to which he existed, to, to which he exists, the society and the values of that particular society as it acts upon the individual. Yes. There is an individual element in that. But no, it is difficult to determine where the individual element begins and where the society itself ends. You are reality unto yourself, bumping into multiple realities, but you are directly affected by those realities that you're bumping into as a person. Now, we have to take that in consideration. We have to take that in context, and we have to ask the question, an honest and difficult question to ask. Given those experiences, given the exact same situation, would I have turned out the same way? Now, let's make it less personal. Given the experiences of a hundred random people, how many of those people would have behaved in the same way given the same situation? Our birth is arbitrary. So you kind of see what I'm getting at. You're saying birth is arbitrary, and yet there's certain factors in a particular society that itself, the contours of that society, how that society is arranged, directly affect the individual how that individual turns out and the things that individual does, particularly aberrant behavior. In the same way that person, if he doesn't get certain vitamins, 
his body will express illness if he doesn't get certain social things. Food, shelter, or nutritious food, clean water, clean air, shelter, a sense of fulfillment, a sense of freedom. Things that would allow a person to be self-actualized. If he doesn't get those things, that person will suffer. The point I'm getting at is, from the perspective of X number of people, let's say you have 100 people, put through the same contours, put through the same thing, essentially a Plinko chip, how many of those people would have made the exact same choice? And if you have a preponderance of people who would have made the exact same choice, how can you just say it's the individual? Don't you have to accept that the contours the individual was accustomed to also has something to do with that situation. Now that's uncomfortable because that puts society on trial. And not just puts society on trial, it puts us on trial. It directly, it directly says we as individuals are not necessarily in full agency. That ultimately there are forces that act on us, that control the things that we do, the decisions that we make. And again, that's not all that revolutionary, but I'm trying to kind of bring this point home that society, for the most part, ignores that component. We look at these things as being separate parts. Chuck Todd is Mr. Oblivious only because Chuck Todd has a defect in himself that's making him Mr. Oblivious. Not that Chuck Todd is working within a system that has certain incentives that causes him to be Mr. Oblivious. What I am getting at is that the problem is the model to which we exist. And it's, you can't necessarily point a finger at any particular individual and say, well, well, actually, you can put a finger at the individual because, yes, you would prefer that individual to not function that way. And yes, even though you may say there are incentives built into the structure that compel that particular behavior, that person is still taking that behavior. It is still a pain in the ass when you're watching somebody lie to you. I'm just adding a little bit more context into the reason for these lies. Not all problems can be solved at the level of the problem or the level of the expression of the problem, meaning that yes, these guys are lying to you. Yes, these politicians are lying to you. No, you can't solve that directly at the level of the politician. You can't solve that directly at the level of the politician. And you can't even solve that directly at the level of the media. You have to solve that at the level of the model. You have to solve it at the level of the model. I'm trying to make a very keen point here to show how the contours of the system to which we exist in whether it's political, whether it's social, whether it's capitalist, however you want to call it. Those things, the values of those systems, the incentives of those systems. Yes, those things are almost invisible, but no, those incentives are extremely real and are extremely real in the consciousness of the individual. We've created a root drive of survival and we've directly attached that to cash, a fiction. That is the reality to which we exist. When these people are making certain decisions in politics, they're doing so to accrue more power. Maximization of power, in that sense. When they're doing this in regards to multinational corporations, when those multinational corporations pay and bribe our politicians, they're doing so because the incentive structure is to maximize profit. State has the ability of force. Because state has the ability of force, it is important to try to own or take over the state. Meaning, yes, if you have a capitalistic system where somebody has huge amounts of profit, that capital will seek to instantiate itself into the governing apparatus. Any governing apparatus that you're talking about, you're also talking about a media apparatus, meaning media. Because those things work in tandem. It's not like one or the other. Media, for the most part, is giving you the, the news of the establishment, the news of the day, the news of the political elites. And just so happened, that news is brought to you by six companies owned by certain corporations. Here's a question. Would those corporations show you things? Would they have certain conversations that will adversely affect them and their interests? Meaning, if I am making this point that the problem is the model, that the things that we look at can't be solved at the level to which they're expressed, that you have to get to a deeper root issue, meaning the model. If that's the case that I'm making, and if that's true, which it is, it absolutely is, it's not as easy to condemn at that point. Because you're realizing that condemning and saying that they should do X doesn't really get to the heart of the reason why they're doing X. You almost have to address the underlying substructure that's causing them to do that. In the same way that that cop, that kid, that whatever, whoever's the victim or the culprit in your particular thing, had a certain culture, had a certain upbringing, had a certain experience, had a certain life that brought them to a particular point. Yes, they had a certain amount of agency in being who they were, 
but the agency was constrained by the experiences of the individual and the contours of that particular society, including the value system and the value structure of that society. So yes, Chuck Todd is going to be Chuck Todd, because Chuck Todd is comfortable being Chuck Todd. There are incentives that have him to be Chuck Todd. Yes, those other news agencies, those politicians are going to behave, they're going to behave because there are certain structures in place that get them to behave that way. I'm not saying to give them a pass. That's not what I'm saying. I'm trying to give more context in the sense of saying, yes, that behavior is atrocious. But if we want to address the behavior, we need to address the underlying substructure. People are not necessarily behaving as individuals, untethered to anything else. You don't have free will, at least not free will in the sense to do whatever you want. You're constrained by where you come from, your experiences, the things that you do, your own personal biases, even your own physical makeup to some degree. Those things are constraints. Yes, you will express certain behavior when certain behavior is applied upon you. So you can't necessarily take the individual completely separate from the society itself and say the individual is something separate and distinct. No, the individual is a part of that society. If I raised a Jew in Germany and taught him to speak German and taught him to turn him into a Nazi, he would be a Nazi. Him being Jew, Jewish, had nothing to do with whether or not he would end up being a Nazi if he was raised in that particular society. The contours of the society is just as important, if not more so, than the individual themselves. The incentive structures of those societies, again, is just as important in determining the behavior of the individual. The point I'm getting at is, in a long-winded way, Yes, those media personalities are fucking annoying. Yes, the political establishment is fucking annoying. Those things can't be solved individually. There's no argument that you can make to a politician to get them to change. Ultimately, the conversation you need to have is about the structure itself, the capitalistic structure, and that is the argument that these people are not going to want to have. Put it on the table. Yes, I'm further to the left than most, but come on, are you telling me that the incentive structures that are built into this particular system don't compel behavior. That is just aberrant behavior. It's aberrant behavior. These guys are going to continue to pump stuff into the sky. Global warming. There's an asteroid that's going to hit the planet. Doesn't matter. The subordinate system says maximize profit, which means that asteroid that's going to hit the sky is less relevant, even though it's as real as can be, it's less relevant than the fiction of cash in the underlying model, in the subordinate reality. It's, it's amazing. But that also, we're talking about just human behavior. That human behavior is functioning at the behest of the system. It's functioning through the conduits of the system. It's like light moving through space. Your human values, in a sense. The things that Harbass was talking about, honesty, compassion, empathy, context. Those things are running up against the incentives of the system. The incentive of the system is maximize your profit, meaning you need to do what you need to do in order to get whatever you need to get. Well, that runs up against your value system. Meaning honesty, compassion, empathy, context. There are times where those things will be in direct conflict with the model itself. The point I'm getting at is the news, the political establishment, all those things. The value systems that Harbasser, that Tim Black, that these guys are talking about, that I am talk, talking about, run counter to that narrative. It runs counter to that narrative. Ultimately, the, the system itself, the model to which we function under, runs counter to that narrative. If any of these guys want to change that system, that's where you have to start. That's where you have to start. You literally have to start looking at the sense of, okay, this is an issue of class, and we need to change the underlying substructure that's causing this aberrant behavior in these people, that's creating these incentives for these people to behave this way. In the same way, if you want to prevent that issue of having that kid getting murdered by that particular cop, look, part of, and this is a slight departure, Having to buy cops is a failure of society. It's literally a failure of society. You're getting a cop, and you're putting him in a situation of having to deal with poverty, degradation, crime. Now, this crime, for the most part, is contrived, because this crime is, I would make the case, is based most off of scarcity. This contrived scarcity of lack, not having, these people not necessarily having their needs met, and behaving in a way that's somewhat aberrant, or showing aberrant behavior. There's nothing that that cop can do in that particular situation to deal with any of those issues other than lock those people up, which means that is a stress point that can't be solved at the level of the issue. So yes, that cop is going to run into conflict every time he deals with somebody in a particular neighborhood. Whether it's white or black, race doesn't really matter in this case. More whites die from cops than blacks. 
but I'm making this point of just the very interaction of the very need for those cops to that particular degree is a failure of the system to which we exist. These things are failures of the model. These things are failures of the model. Chuck Todd is just as much as a failure of the model as is that situation I described earlier with that kid getting murdered by that cop. Or for that matter, that cop getting murdered by that kid. Whatever. It's the same thing. All of these things relate to the model to which we exist and the contours that that model inspires. Yes, I agree with Harvass that only things we can totally agree with certain points. And there are certain points where we're definitely going to agree with. I dislike identity politics with passion. And I would even argue that there's going to be a lot of stuff that him and I agree on that's further to the left. I, look, I don't think Hard Bassett is hard right. I, I honestly don't. I honestly think he's, I think he's somewhat liberal and is pissed with the left for various reasons, which I understand. I've, I've been pissed with the left too. Um, but I'm pissed with the left because the left, I don't think the left is far enough. Not just that, I don't think the left is honest in regards to the way it deals with things, at least when I'm talking about the left of the Democratic Party. Same thing with the Republican Party, though. Both of those parties are dumpster fires. I'm sorry, they are. Those parties milk their own constituents for in different ways, but they're milking their constituents, if that makes sense. Those people need to wake the fuck up. Those parties are the problem. And, and when I'm making this case that these things can't be solved at the level of the problem, that's a yes and that's a no. There's, there's an irony in this. The political apparatus has the capacity to change, meaning it's malleable. You can change and configure your society using that political apparatus. Meaning the substructure that's causing these particular issues, that's causing the Chuck Todd's, that's causing the media to behave in this way, that's causing the politicians to behave in this way, that's causing us, as human beings, to behave in ways that is less than, that is less than optimal in regards to humanness. That's only changed through the model itself. You have to get to the substructure. The parties themselves. Those guys are the defenders of that particular model. Ultimately, these guys are paid a particular salary. I mean, not salary, they're paid donations. Those donations essentially go into getting them to take certain positions on things. Not just take positions on things, but also not take positions on things. Meaning, not talk about certain things. So yes, you have somebody giving Obama a billion dollars. You think Obama is going to bring up class? Not so much. When Sanders mentioned class when he was sitting beside Tom Perez, Tom Perez got up, lit his hair on fire, and hauled ass out the room. That's not a conversation they want to have. That goes against their donors. That goes against the people who pay them. I'm saying that is a conversation you need to have. In order to have that, you need broad support across the political spectrum. I'm talking about a movement. If Hard Bassett wants to be a part of that movement dealing with truth and earnestness, mount up. Mount up. We can use all the help we can get. To the degree to which we agree, yes. On the things that we don't, fair enough. But we would disagree earnestly in those things. So yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We can absolutely get together on those things. I'm just making the point that it's not so easy. Or it's not as simple as saying, yes, honesty is rare. And these people, for the most part, are craven assholes and not necessarily giving us the truth. And yes, that part is true. But there's a larger context to it. Meaning, if that's something you want to solve, got to get to the model, and you can't get to the model unless you have a mass of people that's willing to go to Washington and demand that we have a conversation about the model to which we exist. That's the only way you're going to get that honesty as being the norm, not necessarily a happenstance. Um, hard bastard, good looking out dude. I appreciate the kind words. Absolutely. absolutely. And yes, we can absolutely unite around core principles. Uh, uh, just core basic honesty, fundamental honesty and earnestness. There are going to be things we completely disagree with. But I would hope at the very least we look at it and say, okay, we're to some degree agreeing on reality. Or we're looking at reality in a particular way that's not necessarily being disingenuous. That's all I look for. I don't necessarily need you to agree with me. I just want to know if you're being earnest in that disagreement. So, alright guys, if you enjoyed the content, feel free to share, subscribe, like, and you can always support the work through Patreon.